Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong and welcome to the Back Office Teardown Lab. Friends, you can see no clear desk in front of me and that's because this is a sort of quick-ish project that I started and one that I didn't intend to video. However, I got to the point where I thought I'd better show you what I'm up to because I, <laughs> sometimes I think, okay, I'm going to redo this. I've got, I've got a few of these to do, but it's like, well, if I can get the video out now, show it to you, I don't really need to film myself doing it again and make you know, a job that's relatively long, even longer. So this is a BBC microcomputer from Acorn and it has a power supply that's located in the rear. Removing the power supply and getting the lid off is pretty self-explanatory. In fact, if you're going to do this job, I'm going to assume you know how to do that stuff. And if not, go look on the internet. You will not have a problem with it. So what I've gone and done is I've had to buy a capacitor kit because a capacitor in this actually blew up. It was quite spectacular and it really stank out the whole back office and it looked like that and it was a bang, a proper bang. And you can see it's a sort of paper wrapped, foil wrapped thing with a resin case. And the resin case looks like certainly it's split. I'm going to chuck that in the bin now. I've showed it to you so I can get that stink off my hand. But there's another cap which sits right here in the board, uh, which is also looks like it's getting a getting a crack in it. So this one, came, the big one came from just in there. And this is the other one. And I bought a kit online. And the uh, kit cost me £2.79. And I bought two of them. So I want to do a couple of these. And looks really cool. It's come with loads of accessories. Look at that. This is like the whole kit you need to do a really good job, which I think, looking at it, involves properly removing all of the parts from the power supply, which you can see I've not done. I've basically managed to get out enough uh, without having to undo any wires. I just undid a couple of bolts and, and bits like that. And there are cable ties on the power supply that hold all these wires together. So when you're doing yours, pay attention to where those cable ties are. And it even comes with a disc telling you how to do the power supply repair. So isn't that groovy? I mean, you don't need to watch this video. You can just go and buy the kit and just get on with it, really. So the main caps, though, that I hear blow a lot are those two. So those uh, one in there, one in there. And I'm going to show you the replacements for that now. And the replacements are, I think, this big reefer and a little reefer. And there you go. So that's a little one. 10 nanofarad that's going to go and replace that one there and then I think the other one's a little bit beefier yeah it's beefier and it's 100 nanofarad look it looks like it's the same construction so if you see it, it's got a translucent sort of resin case and you can kind of just see inside there and have a look at all of the the goodness that lies in there if your camera decides to bloody focus which it's not right so I've noticed this in the kit though, there are another four electrolytics. So I'm guessing some of these electrolytics might be uh, susceptible to going, but I'm not going to worry about those right away. Let's just focus on changing these ones. So what I've done is I've flipped it over on its back and I've not even unplugged the wiring from the beep. So you might want to unplug the wiring from the beep because it'll certainly be less likely that you'll damage anything else doing so. And then I'm just looking to see where this other component is and it's these two pads there and sometimes it can help if you're doing this sort of thing is to say okay I want to get rid of that one and I want to take out that one so I'm going to just kick it old school today I've got me solder sucker and me soldering iron I'm not I'm not messing you know with fancy schmancy tools you don't need them just like you do it at home so I'm basically wetting that joint and zoom in. It's, it's old and crusty. So if you're wetting an old and crusty joint, by the way, sometimes it helps just to add a bit more fresh, fresh solder. And it's not necessarily the solder that's doing it. It's the flux in the solder that'll help you out. I'll just take a little go on that. And we'll do the same to the one on the other side. Now, I never really get on with solder suckers, to be honest with you. I kind of feel that they kind of leave too much, but I am told by people in the community that they do a good job, I suppose. I mean, it's wobbly, isn't it? It's a wobbly part. Yeah, I think that's okay, isn't it? That wasn't too bad at all. I take it back. So quite simply, we're gonna put in a 10 nanofarad back in there. 
poke that through. And we're going to take our 100 nanofarad and we're going to poke it in there. And I think that'll go. It's, it's actually hitting the back of the case here. It will go if you make it go, basically. There we are. Nicely done. Let's flip those over. And you can see, like me, I'm doing it on top of the keyboard, the, the everything. You know, be a bit, be a bit more careful than me on that. So first things first, I'm just going to pull the leg up, and then I'm going to hold the soldering iron near the base of one of those legs. And I'm just going to apply a bit of solder. So a blob. So effectively, that's soldering. I'm going to hold the other cold leg and just apply pressure so it doesn't fall down. And that's probably done it. If you're not sure, if you don't think it's sitting flat, you can put your finger on the back, push the cap up, and then just wet the joint again. You can see it's it is all the way home. So really, the actual soldering part of this is probably the quickest part. You know, compared to actually getting in there. This is just going to be a breeze. So once that other one basically cools off, I'm going to just re-wet this one and just give it a bit extra. Boom. There you go. I'm just trying to imagine I'm a guy in the 80s soldering this up, and I'm going to be like, yeah, let's just give it plenty. Got nothing to lose here. Old Chris Curry, he's not looking. He's not counting up the old soldering budget. So we're just going to dump as much as we can on there. But honestly, you don't want this to come undone, do you? I mean, if it's lasted 40 odd years, just just shy so far, I should think it's one replacement that uh, you can afford a bit of extra solder and time on. Just cut those legs away. So technically, you could probably leave it at that and you'd be done, yeah? But let's have a quick look at the other ones. Now, I was rooting around in a master they're quite interesting in that they've got some batteries to sort and those um, they're quite easily doable so I'll do another video on that but let's see if we can locate where these these little fellas go I mean there's only two smallish looking caps and that's one down here which would be the C21 and one here which is the C18 so if I could just read off what they are it does look like a 100 oh well, I don't know now I think that's more like a 100 nanofarad right I'm gonna level with you I didn't RTFM I actually just had a little look on the board and uh, I did notice this very odd looking fella and it looks like maybe someone in the past has had a go because we've got this 220 farad uh, microfarad capacitor here that's been kind of jury rigged into this C9 position. And I, I'm pretty sure that's what the C, um, these 22 mi uh, 220 microfarad capacitors are for. I don't think they're for this side. I think they were for design variants here because there's another cap. There's a lot of caps here. And I'm guessing an earlier version of the power supplies, they may use more and less of those because the kit it covers all of the different variants. So I think that's the one I'm definitely gonna be having a look at. So let's see if we can figure out where that wobbly beauty is. Oh, I think I suspect from the soldering it's going to be these, but uh, could be wrong. And then something else is going to drop out from. No, it's these. So yeah, someone's had a go. Isn't that interesting? I kind of wonder how many times it's been replaced and. That would imply also this is the negative side, by the way. <laughs> I've just made a little mark on the port because we didn't stop to check the polarity. I'm going to assume it's not on the other side. So that's nice and clear just to sort of show you. Mmm, holy. And I'm going to make a check by just poking something through. Yeah, there you go, fixed. 
yes, <laughs> negative to the outer boards. We were right there. So you just pop that in. It's this how simple these are. If you're doing them at home, really, look, you can see it's not. I'm not. I'm definitely not taking any care. Uh, which is <laughs> a sign of quality. No, I, uh, I'm taking appropriate care, really. I mean, it's. I've just done this sort of thing a lot. Um, I'm going to poke that through. You're going to take more care and you're going to get it 100% right. Don't worry about it. Just go and tackle that. Good. So we need to get our little cutters wherever we left those. Snip the excess off. We're kind of done, really. So I wonder, I wonder how uh, long that uh, guy's been in there. Just, I might have to find the uh, rest of this case wherever I put it. Alarmingly, not straight in front of my immediate vicinity. It's a problem with all these projects, isn't it? You start something and then you order parts, and then you have to wait for more parts to come in. And before you know it, everything's lost. Right, so get all your earth things out of the way. So we're going to test this right now. And I'm going to try to convince this to get back into its case. <laughs> Look at that. Looky, looky. got to be careful if you're doing it there's a bunch of very small little earth and, and a screw that's just dropped into here um, there's a bunch of very small earth type um, terminals that you don't really want to get in the wrong place so just take care of that just I'm just going to show them to you in a moment there's one here So you'll see them like that. Just make sure you kind of connect them back up and you're done. And all that bonding right and nice. I'm just going to poke the mains switch back in. I mean, that was the, to be honest, the biggest painful thing was probably just getting the main switch out. So we can effectively put that in now. Before I do, I'm going to test this and I'm going to, I'm not going to take my own medicine as it were and put all of these earths back in. I'm just going to leave them and stand well back and this is in on position so I don't want to touch it really once it's all going I'm just going to use the mains as a switch and we should hear the familiar BBC micro sound if all's gone well there you heard that ready and what I've noticed rather snazzily that someone's done here is they've put a resistor in line <laughs> to the speaker. So obviously you thought the speaker's too loud for them and I don't I don't like that. I'm going to take that out. So we all get to hear the speaker at full proper BBC micro volume, please. Why would you do that? If you do it properly, you're going to put an adjustable volume on there. Right. Let's hear it properly, please. Nice. So there you go. That's um uh, it. <laughs> So that's part of the process. Now, the rest of this is going to be a bit ginger because I don't want to hit any caps and get zapped. Um, it's just really the reverse. So just put all of the screws in, get the lid back on and get it back in. So that bit, um, yeah, refer to the CD or the online guides because I'm tired. I've just been on a sort of 11, 12 mile run and I need a little resty rest. But there you go. I'm going to do that slowly and carefully and enjoy playing some BBC Micro. Have a wonderful week, weekend or year ahead of you whenever you're watching this. As ever, thank you for watching. <laughs> <laughs>